naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. part of the Nemanha organization that I'm part of and part of our traditional ways. So yesterday I was uh, delivering, you know, picking up uh, wood from my dad's house and see, you know, he's going to, we're going to be selling the home. We're going to be doing away with the home. I was getting wood that, you know, we have left over and taking it, loading it to take it to my dad's, I uh, mean, to the sweat lodge grounds. Sorry. As I was throwing the the wood in, a piece of wood came flying back at me. It was kind of funny. I was like, "What the heck was that?" And then I kind of fell backwards, and I felt like something caught me, like something like grabbed me and kept me from falling. So I'm going, "Man, I, this is someone's got my back. Someone's going, you know." So I loaded my truck up pretty significantly with the 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 wood and the stones and the stuff that I was taking for the sweat lodge. Then I made it to the sweat lodge grounds, you know, parallel, not parallel park, but I backed up into the space where we're dropping off things. Unloaded all the stones, unloaded all the wood, and then, you know, just kind of looking around and, you know, meandering through the, through the grounds, just giving my thanks and, you know, my homage to Mother Earth and giving thanks. And then all of a sudden, this girl appears, and I'd never seen her before, and there was no cars in, in except for the red car that's usually there that at the center and she asked me when the next sweat was going to be I said well there's no sweat today and she's like and she started babbling like almost like a babble like a talk and I was like like she was confused like I was confused and uh, I asked her I said have you ever been in a in a sweat lodge it's sippy and she's like she goes no I said yeah and I, was, I said you should you should come she says she would like that she'd like to come and I said I turned around I mean it wasn't even I wasn't even a minute. I turned. And I said, "Would you like to? Would you like to see the? Would you like to see the sweat? Would you like to come over and take a look?" And when I turned back around, she was completely. She's gone. She wasn't there. She was just like vanished. And I was just like, "Whoa! What just happened?" I mean, I've had these things happen to me before, but this one was really profound. And uh, the cool thing about it was, she was. Um, she had dreadlocks and she had tattoos on her arms, and um, she represented herself in a way that I could understand, I guess, connect with. And um, it was just a really powerful message for me to get back on track and and get back into ceremony, get reconnected to uh, my, the old ways. As I, I mean, I, I am doing that, but I've been doing really a lot more, you know, just a lot of, lot of drumming and stuff. So, but now it's time for me to get back into deep, you know, fire ceremonies, ancestral works and share those things as well i've been gotten away from that a little bit just being and doing a lot of drumming circles and stuff like that which is they have its own power and its own beauty too but it's she reminded me that the 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 sweat lodge is an important place for people to be important place for me to be important to teach and share you know old traditions old ways you know not to not let them get lost and uh and that's kind of what I went home with, and I thought that was pretty powerful. I thought that was pretty neat, and uh, you know, something that just has to be done. Sometimes we forget, we get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life, and all of a sudden, you know, we're out of alignment with uh, the earth, out of alignment with the mother. And um, there's so much going on right now with Mother Earth, and the sweat will be in October sometime. For those of you, I'm gonna create it. Um, an event for that for those to invite those who are open and called to be here and um, just get back to the teachings too I've I've just started again to teach again I took a little hiatus and a little break from that as my father and my mother transitioned they moved into their the spirit realm I kind of been in the grieving process but now I feel like it's time to reconnect and mother earth is reconnecting me getting hold of me great spirit is getting hold of me 
to share and to be uh, in that energy again, to be with that. I've taken a little break and now it's time for me to get my, my uh, what is it, my orders to go and, and spread the love and share the old traditions old ways in, res in a respectful way. And that those who are there also respect that as well. There's, there's something about being connected to to Earth Mother. She's a living, sentient being. She's she's alive. We're part of her. We're part of her as much as she's part of us. Without her, we don't survive. Mother Earth is very powerful in herself. She doesn't necessarily need us per se, but we can do a lot for her by taking care of her and honoring her. And sometimes we don't honor Mother Earth. We don't give her the accolades that she deserves and rightly deserves because she is the only reason where we live. The trees, the plants, the waters, all the things that we cannot live without. You can't live without it. I don't, I don't care who you are. I don't care how smart you think you are and how you intelligent you think you can be. If you don't have the trees, you don't have the earth, you don't have the bees, you don't have the birds, you don't have the balance and the harmony that comes with that, you're kidding yourself. You know, you're kidding yourself. You know, I don't care how many pills you'll pop, how many dry hydrated foods you could eat, how many canned foods. It all comes from the earth. Even the stuff that, the, the things that we, that we wipe our ass with comes from Mother Earth, okay? And the things that we drink and consume comes from Mother Earth. The nuclear material that we create comes from Mother Earth. It's no surprise. It's no big, no big, uh, you know, epiphany to understand that. What we need to know is that it, it all comes from Mother Earth. Every single, every single little molecule comes from Earth that belongs on this Earth. And we are part of that Earth and it is our responsibility and not to put responsibility on anybody else, but ours individually, our responsibility to make the difference and make something happen. If you want something to happen, you have to do it. Because you know what? If you wait around for somebody else to do it, it's never going to happen. And I don't care what it is and how you do it, as long as it's in a, in a healthy way, positive, and you're creating healthy limits and boundaries between, you know, spirit and between Mother Earth. You know, we cannot discount, we cannot abuse her anymore. It's just beyond recognition the things that we are doing number one we have the capacity to do great things on this planet we have eight billion people and we have eight billion dreams eight billion goals eight billion desires and for us to not realize that we have to take care of her is a total shame and i ask the leaders in our communities the ones who are actually the ones who understand this to be more vocal to become more um not aware but just be more out there and say hey you know what we need to take care of mother earth without mother earth there is nothing if you're looking for another planet well good luck with that i'm sure there is one out there that most of us will never see that day to get there let's take care of what we have here today it's kind of like what we have our homes let's take care of our homes the best of our ability let's take care of the things that we already know the things that are in front of us versus trying to find and rediscover new things and new planets so we can go do and rape and pillage the same thing those things we can't do that and I guess Mother Earth is just here to remind me. She tells you that she loves you and she she acknowledges you all. Sky Father also here to acknowledge that he loves you. And he honors you and loves you all. But the point is you have to love yourself. You have to love what you have in front of you. You have to love this planet, this earth. These things that we call plants. These things that feed us. These things that honor us. These things that they just do automatically and grow. We have... We plant our tomatoes, we plant our corn, and we eat, and then sometimes we forget and we don't give thanks. Mother Earth is crying out, in a sense, for our survival, not necessarily hers, but yours. She does, she loves us, she wants us to be here. She, she loves the creation that has been created before her, you know, by great spirit and by her hand and by her, her clay. And she adores us. And she's saddened for why, how we destruct, we're so destructive, and how we do with her, and how we abuse her. Um, she has no choice but to shake the fleas off her body, which are us, you know, at times in scratch. And some of us pay a dear consequence for that. And for that, you know, she asks for no forgiveness, she asks for no pity, she will just do what she does. But she wants to give us a chance to do the right thing. She wants to give us the opportunity to do things in a proper way. And we have that. If you don't think you are a leader, you don't think you're a person who can make that happen, I, I challenge you. You can. Every single person, 8 billion people on this planet can make a difference. 
where we all decide that we're all going to work together to survive, to make this a better planet, to harness the wind in a free way, to enjoy it, to harness the sunlight in a free way. You know, our bodies need the sun, our bodies need the air, you know, and we uh, do so much damage in order to create commerce and to create money and to create jobs and to create, you know, infrastructure. The infrastructure is here. It's pretty simple. Live from the land. Off offers from the land that she gives us every day. And when the winter comes, prepare prepare yourself for the winter. Most of us are ill prepared for winter. If one day the grid fell and collapsed, most of us wouldn't survive just because it would be so cold. We would have to align ourselves with people who are a little bit more crafty than us, a little more advanced than us, a little more uh, person who prepared themselves. The majority of the human humans here on this planet, if a catastrophe fell for us, and not nothing that we created, just a catastrophe in a whole, most of us wouldn't survive. Just because, personally, we are ill-equipped. I challenge you to learn how to grow things, learn how to process things, learn how to harness things, learn how to be part of things, learn how to be in communication with, with the things that are just right in front of us. Most of us look at a blade of grass and see grass and that's all. Beneath that is a, a, a plethora of, of, of knowledge and wisdom that is growing there within the root systems of all. all. Your yard is connected to everything as the trees, as the plants. And if, you're, if your garden is in the ground, it's connected to your yard. It's connected to you. When you put your foot on the ground, you don't believe that there's a vibration, a connection between you and your plants and you and the grass and everything that happens to you. Of course there is. Science would try to prove wrong and differently that the earth doesn't change us and we don't, we're not affected by it, but we are affected by it. If you sit in the sun naked for three hours and you don't turn over, I guarantee you, you're gonna be fried like a little potato, okay? A little, little baked potato left in the oven too long. So we also have to honor and respect that how powerful this universal um, dance is between earth mother, sky father, you know, and becoming one with both of them, becoming intrinsically and harmonically connected to one another to create that balance that we have that we forget we forget because life takes over life life grabs us and just whoops us sometimes and you know what and the whooping is more detrimental sometimes to us and something that's so fresh in our mind and scars us and hurts us that we forget about all the other things that are valuable and important to us all the things that we say hey you know what I need to be reconnected. So how do you reconnect with Earth? Well, shoot, just step outside. Every time you step outside, just give thanks. You know, notice a butterfly that's, you know, pollinating a flower. You know, sometimes we're such in a hurry, and you know, I'm, I'm just as guilty as the next person. I'm in a hurry too. But look at the clouds. Today, they're just beautiful. I mean, there's a, a, a blue that you can't even describe. You know, you look up at the sky. Look how beautiful that is. And there's like gray clouds coming in. You know, it's just amazing. It's amazing. We want to change the world? Change your world. As we change our world, we change the world. We only have what we have is because we're not willing to change certain aspects of it. I'm not saying you have to be ruthless. I'm not saying you have to be um, destructive. And things don't have to be, you don't have to destroy something in order to make it better. Sometimes we just have to harness it and mend it. It's like a leg. You break your leg, you don't just take it off, right? You just, you cast it, you fix it, and you let it heal slowly but surely. But you're doing the right things. The same way with you. You know, when you have a cold, there's a process. You work through the process. You go through the things that work to your body. Remember, and when, whenever we create medicines, medicines come from Mother Earth. Where else do you come from? They don't come from outer space, as far as I know. But anyhow, the, the point is, everything, check this out, there's a rabbit right there, check it out. See the rabbit? A rabbit just ran right into my yard, into my knees feet. Isn't that cool? Something spooked him, or something, or there's a message there. If anything, if you guys don't know anything about the medicine wheel, the medicine wheel talks about the south point. The south point is the green door. It's the snake, it's the rabbit, it's all creatures that burrow. Okay, so that is the looks within door. That is the door where we look into our skin, our bones, and the aspect. So this is a message for me and for whoever. This is something to remind me that I have to consider taking care of myself, being healthy. And my dog's about to run after that rabbit in about two seconds. And uh, <laughs> that rabbit better be careful. 
it's about you know take care of ourselves it's about looking inside our hearts looking inside the different aspects of ourselves you see my dogs on the porch right there and the rabbits right there okay left dog rabbit there not gonna be a, it's gonna be kind of crazy here in about two seconds there's there's this just balance of nature it's about to occur I think the dog's gonna be okay because she knows that I'm here and she's not gonna jump on it but I just want everybody to understand that this vision I had about Earth Mother is just reminding me to get back in connection with Earth to get back in connection with Earth Mother to get back in connection with nature to get back into life um, it's easy for people to get disconnected I definitely have become disconnected just because I'm a human being I'm a, I'm a human I'm just like everybody in there I don't I'm not any more special than you we're all special in our own unique ways you know spirit gives us you know things that we have to work on you know and we are given, we are intrinsically given this this assignment on planet earth to do certain things and these assignments are our assignments and sometimes they're only our assignments sometimes it's us to do I know there's so many times that some of us want to do certain things are like oh I wish I was like that guy or I wish I was like that person. well you know what sometimes wishing for that is okay but sometimes you have your own assignment and you have to do it and we forget sometimes that we all have a special calling to do on this planet and to work together and to make things better and sometimes just raising your kids and teaching them the right way to be and teaching them things that maybe they wouldn't learn in school or learn in a certain situation you know is just as powerful you know as trying to be um, you know the king of England or queen of England or or president of the United States sometimes the person who is humble and and just is like anybody normal like a blade of grass that blows in the wind is important we need everybody and of course my dog saw the rabbit now so we're about to see a show here Lulu it's too fast Lulu <laughs> my dog went after the rabbit but she's on a tether so it doesn't the rabbit already knew that rabbit smart rabbit just teasing my dog but anyhow, I just ask everybody to do their best they can. Be vigilant, be open, be aware that there are messages from spirit all the time. Messages from, you know, Mother Earth that she's trying to communicate to us. When we're listening and when we're in tune and when we are connected, you know, that's when we see the most. But when you're disconnected, Earth Mother and Sky Father will smack you. And remind you in a way that you can't even describe sometimes what you do with a message is truly up to you how you move from that energy is really up to you remember you're in control to some degree when I mean you're in control you're in control to make decisions for you and sometimes these decisions may feel painful they may feel confusing I have to tell you confusion is probably the biggest thing that keeps people from changing because they're they weigh they weigh things you know the, the goods and the pros and the cons you know sometimes if, if you're gonna stay in a situation that's dysfunctional then you must fun, find the functionality within the dysfunction okay and that's not easy okay and then when you if you leave a situation that was dysfunctional and you come into another situation you must find the functionality within that also what is good what is not you need to learn very quickly what's important what works what doesn't work because as human beings, we carry our baggage around like backpacks on our back, unless we're ready to cut them off. And when we and cut them off is is a very broad term because you know what? It's hard to cut off things. It's hard to cut off things that hurt us, people, situations, moments, and times. But they are but nothing but a memory now. They are nothing but something that was a moment in a certain period of time. So how do we carry those moments in the period of time? How do we move forward? into the next existence how do we move well it takes time you have to work on it for some people it's very easy for some people it's very difficult for some people they just have to realize that they're human I have to realize I'm human you must realize you're human being human there's nothing wrong with being a human being the whole th reason about being human is the human experience to know that we're going to fail we're going to succeed we're going to fail we're going to succeed 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 fail 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 that's just part of it oh my god how many times have I fall failed you know that's just how it is that's life 
how many times did you get up is the question. That's that old saying. How, I fell seven times. Well, get up eight, you know? It depends. I think we put too much stress on our failures and our things that didn't work out for us. I had situations last week where they just, everything that came out of my mouth was taken completely wrong. But that's how it is. That's how we learn. That's how you move forward. That's how you get into place. And, you know, that's how we learn. And I'm going to sulk. I'll be the first person to sulk. I'll be the first person to sulk. Oh, I messed up, you know. Because that's who I am. I have nothing to hide. I want to be as, you know, as authentic as I can with people I know or don't know. So they know that at least what they're getting is, is the true deal. So when Mother Earth presented herself today and with Gaia presented herself, it wasn't it was yesterday. I was, it was a big blessing. It was a huge honor to actually get to see her in an incarnation or, or an angel. Who knows what it was, but just to turn around and them not being there in a matter of seconds, it just, it just, it rocked me. It was just like, whoa. So those of you who want to do a sweat with me, we will do a sweat lodge. I will post it here real shortly and, um, and we'll get together and we'll do this because it's time. It's time to get reconnected with uh, with the energies of the earth, get reconnected with energies of the universal energies, which we call God or we call spirit or great spirit, to get connected with the energies of the earth, because the earth is has its own spirit, it has its own grounding, it has its own system, it has its own, you know, uh, resonance, it has its own frequency, and this frequency is super, super powerful, and we have to at least feel it and acknowledge it because you know what sometimes we don't feel because we're disconnected and then we think we're sick or we think we're a certain way or something's happened to us it's because you're feeling the earth it's because you're feeling you know when it's a sunny day you feel the beautiful sunny day and when it's cloudy day you feel the cloudy day are you feeling the cloudy day or are you feeling the vibrations the energies that can that are being moved around remember we're all connected we're all my relations the trees, the plants, they all prepare for the rains. They all prepare the birds and the, and the animals. They all prepare when the rains come or when the storms come. You know, we're all connected. To believe that we are disconnected from one another is not true statement. Even when we're mostly, when we don't feel connected to somebody, we're still connected to that, that person because when we're trying to connect, they shut us off. But that connection is still there. We're still a human connection. We're still human connection. We're still connected. So within the connections of all the things that happen on the planet, there is a connection that is a spiritual connection between humans and animals and plants and all kinds of things. So that's kind of what I felt yesterday. I felt the connection with spirit. Spirit presented herself in a way I could understand. And when she presented me in a form that I could understand, it was easier for me to translate in my mind of memories and, and emotions and moments that have happened. Now I have that memory in my mind how she will present herself in the future. I just have to be prepared to understand her message. So guys, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I really appreciate you taking time to hear my little stories and uh, inspirations and frustrations and things. But that's what we do as humans. We t our stories are powerful. Humanity has been created on stories. Some of these stories are positive. Some of these stories are negative. Some of these stories have had terrible outcomes. Some of these stories have been very frustrating for humanity. Some of these stories have been very amazing for humanity. We run the gamut of storytelling. Storytelling is the reason why we are humans. Why brings humans together? When we're around the campfire, telling the stories of what our day was like, telling the stories of our ancestors, you know, we write songs about stories, about feelings and emotions. These are the stories. Human beings strive on these things. People, human beings watch movies because it's a story about another human having an experience that maybe we had or maybe we wish we had. We tell stories. Star Wars is a story of a, of a galaxy far, far away, you know. And Willow, your husband, wrote a, a movie. You know, he wrote a story, you know, about a galaxy far, far, or maybe in the near near future who knows so we we have this connection all my relations and not all the stories are fun not all the stories are cool some stories we resonate with and some we don't but we as human beings our strongest connection is the stories that we tell one another the stories that we share with each other the stories of yesterday the stories of tomorrow the stories to be 
the stories that will bring us together, the stories that will align us. So guys, have a blessed, blessed uh, week. It's Monday. It's beautiful out. Oh my God, it's beautiful. I got, I got storm clouds in the distance, blue cloud, clouds on the back, sunshine on my back. What more could I ask for, you know? Wind blowing upon my brow, upon my legs and my arms. It's just an amazing feel today. All right, guys, be well, take care of yourself. I really enjoy sharing my stories with you, sharing my um, my experiences of, of life, how I see life. That's why it's called the mind of Iggy. That's in my mind, I see things the way I'm supposed to see them. In my mind, the world appears and presents itself in a way that I, you know, can relate to. Uh, you know, for maybe for somebody else, it's weird, but for me, it's kind of an adventure. It's kind of fun. You know, look, there's there's a big bird. I'm not sure that's an eagle, but it's in the distance and it's gliding. The, it's gliding there. And yes, well, thank you for reminding me of that. It is good to be here. Absolutely. I do truly, 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 truly believe that. All right. Peace and love, guys. Take care. Be well. And I will see you next time.